Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer. And today we're reacting to Amber Heard's cross-examination. But before we get to that, I want to give a shout out. I'm fresh back from Chicago. I went to a seminar in Chicago put on by the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. And it was uh, what's inside the black box. In other words, uh, analyzing technology and social media. And guess what one of the topics was? self Snitching, guys. You got to, guys that listen to me. You got you got to not self snitch. They are mining the data out there. Anyway, I had a great time in Chicago. I want to give a shout out to Ashley, Noe, and Bianca. Um, <clears throat> we all had dinner together. Three of the best fans that any guy could ever hope to have. And then I also met a gal by the name of Larie, who's uh, uh, getting her master's in criminal studies and and trying to think about whether she should go to uh, law school or not. And I'm telling you, Larie, go to law school. Uh, anyway, but we had a great time. Really fun to meet some people. Even met some folks on the street that recognized me from the channel right away. I want to just tell you, I really appreciate everybody that's watching, all the comments. And uh, <clears throat> so let's get into what we're here to talk about today, the cross-examination of Amber Heard. This is a delicate thing because if it's not done properly, it could really go south. <clears throat> because if, first of all, they were brilliant in picking uh, Camille, Camille Vasquez, or Vasquez, I'm not sure how she pronounces her name, but <clears throat> Camille was a beast. She was an absolute beast. And the reason she could get away with it, number one, she's a little smaller in stature, right? She's a little shorter. And she had a really good presence in the courtroom. Very good presence. A guy, especially Don, Johnny's main lawyer, who's a very big guy and a very well-accomplished lawyer, could be perceived as bullying uh, against uh, Amber Heard. There were so many great moments, so many great moments in this. Uh, and then it wound up at the very end with a, another great moment with uh, her lawyers. But let's just get into it. Let's uh, let's react to some of these cross examinations. Did you once this entire trial? Has he? Not that I've noticed. No. You've looked at him though many times, haven't you? Yes, I have. You know exactly why Mr. Depp won't look back at you, don't you? Now, first of all, I don't know why they have why she is dressing this way, uh, with her hair tight, and she she looks harsh. And I don't mean to be that uh, critical of her appearance, but a jury, you know, is going to have to take in what she is saying. And that includes her body language. That includes her dress. That includes her hair up or down. It, it, you know, you, everything's about communication. And if you look at, at her, there's, I saw another one uh, it, between her and Dr. Evil, and they look fucking identical. They look like they're in the same movie. Um, I wouldn't have let her, uh, I would have coached her a little differently on wearing this dress and I would have put her hair down. I do. He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? I don't recall if he said that. One of the last times you ever saw Mr. Depp was when you met him in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? That was the second to last time I saw him, yes. Now, cross-examination is different than direct examination. You can't lead on direct examination. And leading is what, what exactly what Camille is doing here. She's saying, isn't it true that, you know, and the, in other words, the answer is in the question, which gives her very little wiggle room to say anything but yes or no. And this was after you had publicly accused him of domestic violence. I got my restraining order before that, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is after you had obtained the domestic violence restraining order against him. That's correct. Let's please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 1229. No. Oh, no, I thought you'd say that all, all this, this, all this, everything you just wanted, said. I, I just wanted to touch you. you really, after all the yes, you just said? I just wanted to give you a I just, I yes, yes, please, 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 stop me. Please, stop. Please, please, stop. Please, please, stop. Please, I just wanted to hug you. 
So it's kind of almost cringy to sit there and listen to these private conversations, but they're all recorded. One of the things she said on direct examination was that she, he couldn't look at her, okay? That he just, he couldn't look at her because of what he's done. And that's not what is going on here at all. That's you and Mr. Depp in that recording. That is. And this is from when you and Mr. Depp met in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? Yes, that's what it sounds like. That was in the hotel. We met once after that as well. This is after you publicly accused him of domestic abuse. Uh, yes, and got my TRO. So one of the things that Amber Heard did is she got a restraining order, and then she sort of broke the restraining order herself by going to the hotel and seeking Johnny out. Yeah. And he tells you, you will not see my eyes again, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does in that recording. And he kept that promise, hasn't he? As far as I know, he cannot look at me. He won't look at you, right, Ms. Heard? He can't. One of the first questions your counsel asked you on direct is, why are you here? Do you remember that? I do. Let's please play plaintiff exhibit 357A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. Right. And for the record, it's 2122 through 2140. See what the jury judge thinks. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I'm, I'm a victim too of domestic violence. And yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. And see how many people believe or side with you. That's your voice on that recording, right? Yes, it is. And you were speaking with Mr. Depp? Yes. And you said to Mr. Depp, quote, you can tell, you can please tell people that it was a fair and see what the jury and the judge think. Tell the world, Johnny, tell them, Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, a man, a victim too of domestic violence, end quote. That's what you said, right? I was saying it to the man who beat me up, yes. Ms. Heard, you testified to an incident in March of 2013 where Mr. Depp hit you in the face multiple times. Do you recall that? That's correct. Now this is, this, he, she talks about um, getting hit multiple times in the face. There are absolutely no open wounds on her whatsoever. If you are being pummeled with a guy that's got multiple rings on both hands, you would think it would break the skin. And that's the kind of the, that's the point I think that Camille's trying to make here. Correct. And you testified, quote, you don't know how many times he hit you in the face. That's correct. So Mr. Depp hit you in the face multiple times while he was wearing rings on this occasion, correct? Which occasion in March are you referencing? You weren't The specific. testimony that you gave on day 15 of this trial, March of 2013, you weren't specific as to the day. There were several incidents. The one where he hit you several times in the face. Uh, there were, there were so, I'm um, sorry, just so I understand better. There were several incidents in March. Which one are you asking me about? The time that he hit you several times in the face wearing rings. Well, he pretty in much March always... March of 2013. Right. What are you asking me? I'm sorry. When you, when you have a witness that is searching for the answers, and that's what she's doing here. She's trying not to answer the question. When you have a witness that's trying not to answer the question, which is what's happening here, she really lacks 
uh, or lose starts to lose credibility because there's a reason she doesn't want to answer it because she's making it up, or at least that's what the uh, lawyer is trying to bring out. So, and one of the other things you'll notice is that when she does give an answer, she looks at the jury. That's likely what her lawyers told her to do because she's really not communicating with Camille. This isn't a conversation between she and the other side's lawyer. This is a, this is really her communicating to the jury. He was wearing rings on that occasion. I pretty much always knew him to wear rings. Okay, let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 170A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. You testified that this is a picture you took after that incident, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, that was one where he grabbed me. And hit you in the face so many times that you don't remember. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And there's no injuries to your face in this picture, are there? Not that this picture shows. And there's no medical records reflecting that you sought treatment after this alleged incident either. I did not seek medical treatment at this time. You testified that you were also raped with a liquor bottle in Australia, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes. You testified you bled from your vagina as a result of that sexual assault. So these are, are questions that are just so in your face, they're so direct, and honestly, you know, I this is just trial tactics 101. Coming from a man, it would sound so much differently than than coming from a woman who looks very similar to the person that she's cross-examining. Yes. There aren't any medical records reflecting that you sought medical treatment for any of these injuries, are there? I did not seek uh, medical treatment after Australia, no. Not for the rape? No, I did not want to tell anyone. Not for the cuts? No. Not for the injuries to your face? I didn't need to. Ms. Hurd, let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1090, which is already in evidence. And if you notice, she doesn't give her time to explain. She gets out what she needs to get out and doesn't ask too many questions. You took this photograph, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And you testified that this was taken in Tokyo in July of 2013, correct? Yes. So you decided to take a picture of Mr. Depp asleep on the floor? He was passed out. That's a and yes. And I took a picture of him because he uh, wouldn't remember. He claimed he didn't pass out that way. And sometimes security would carry him like a baby into bed, get him changed, and he would be none the wiser. So I started taking pictures of it so that he knew that it was real, that it had gotten this bad. Mr. Hurd, does this refresh your recollection that you did, in fact, send this picture to your friend, Rocky Pennington? Yes, I did. Sending these very compromising photos is not an act of love. You sent it to her on August 7th, 2014 at 11.24 p.m., correct? That is correct. So you sent Ms. Pennington this picture of Mr. Depp with ice cream spilled on him, right? That is correct. And you wrote, quote, this is what I've been dealing with, end quote. Did I read that right? You did read that right, that's correct. And this is you protecting Mr. Depp? That is me getting support from my best friend. This is you supporting Mr. Depp? This is me getting support from my best friend. I also need support. You weren't afraid the, the monster would get upset that you took this picture? This was um, Opiate Johnny. This is uh, different. It's also after a 17 hour work day. Version of him, this is Opiate on the nod Johnny. And you weren't afraid that Opiate Johnny or the monster as you called him would get upset that you sent this picture to your friend? Well, he's all of those things. He, of course he could get upset. Of course that's scary to me, of course. But it stop you from sending this picture to your friend, did it? Why would it? So in this October 2018 interview, you said that you had, quote, donated, end quote, your entire divorce settlement to charity, right? Now we've all seen this one, right? And, and these are, she's just out and outright lying and playing semantics with it and, and doesn't want to go there. 
but she's on record, you know, on a on a TV show, show saying she's donated this money. You know, you can pledge all you want, but until you paid, you haven't donated a jack. That's correct. And in fact, your exact words were, quote, seven million in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, end quote. And think about this. I've read, she, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've read she's worth about eight million. And seven of that came from Johnny. So there's no way she's going to give away, you know, 99% of her, her, her wealth. That's right. That's correct. I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement. That's when I pledged it, right then. And you say this because you, quote, wanted nothing, end quote. That is correct. But you hadn't donated your entire, entire $7 million settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. Sitting here today, Ms. Heard, you still haven't donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no, of Ms. the Heard, settlement, $7 that, million to question. charity, and I, f Heard, I intend to fulfill Heard, those obligations. Heard, that's not my question. Please, what try was your to question? answer my question. Sitting here today, you have not donated the $7 million, donated, not pledged, donated. The now, this is an easy one for her to answer. She can say, no, I, I haven't. I haven't paid it yet, but I've, I've pledged it, and it's going to get paid. She could, she could, that would just be easy to say that, but she can't because she somehow thinks she's giving something up. The person from the ACU, ACLU has said it's not been paid. So it's, it is just a fighting over semantics, which is just ridiculous, and you lose credibility when you do this. And it's over something stupid like this. $7 million divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They, but I the don't. Ms. Heard, I don't use it synonymously. That's how donations are paid. Ms. Heard, respectfully, that's not my question. As of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the ACLU. Yes or no? I have not yet. You had all of the $7 million for 13 months before Mr. Depp sued you and you chose not to pay it to the charities you pledged it to. Is that I, correct? Mr. I disagree with your characterization of that. Most of the money that was donated to... So she's fighting with the lawyer over something that doesn't really matter. She could say, yeah, I, I, I pledged it. I haven't paid it yet. I'm going to. But the problem is she's on record saying she's already donated the, the full amount of her settlement, trying to make herself look better than she is. To the ACLU and CHLA and your name came from someone else. Isn't that right? I don't know what you mean by most of. Well, at least $500,000 that was donated to the ACLU in your name wasn't paid by you, right? Uh, I believe Elon made a donation in my honor on one of, you, one of the years. Yeah, and it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement, right? No, nor did it count towards my pledge. And at least $500,000 that was donated to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles in your name wasn't paid by you either. Right, those were made at the same time. And it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement. Nor did it count to my 3.5 obligation. Those $500,000 payments came from your new boyfriend, Elon Musk, right? Uh, he, I don't know if he was a new boyfriend at the time. You got him to pay part of what you promised to these two charities, didn't you? Incorrect. Because you wanted to keep at least some of the $7 million divorce settlement for yourself, right? I'm very wrong about that. I think this. Okay. So let's look at some other key moments uh, of this trial. Ms. Hurd, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 881A. Um, this is one of the articles containing the counterclaim statements by Adam Waldman. Is that correct? I haven't seen the article yet. Okay. So one of the things, you know, aside from, you can't just go after her just to make her a liar. That just isn't productive. I mean, that is something you need to do. You need to discredit her if you can. Um, but you also, if you can, you need to bring things out that are directly related to the claims that she's making. So she's made a counterclaim. So let's listen to what she has to say. Why don't we go to page eight of this article? Uh, 
Adam Waldman, Depp's lawyer, said afterwards, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as a sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Is that one of the statements that you allege are defamatory? It's defamatory? That's, that's correct. Ms. Heard, you're not aware. So what she's doing, she's drilling down what the claims are. And by doing that, in closing argument, they can really uh, get rid of him. Because even though uh, Waldron or whoever it is, is maybe an agent of Johnny Depp's in the sense, it's not Johnny Depp publishing these. And so that's what she's drilling down. Of any career opportunities that you lost as a result of Mr. Waldron's statements, are you? Well, it's kind of hard to point to the jobs you're not offered. It's hard to point up to the jobs that you're not offered. Now, that directly relates to her damages because even if she can win her defamation claim, if she can't prove damages, she doesn't get a dollar. So Johnny Depp can absolutely prove that he did not get Pirate 6 because of these allegations. They canceled him, right? And her statement right there, you can't, I, I can't tell you the jobs I didn't get. In other words, I don't know what my losses are. Right. To the gigs you don't get. You were not replaced in Aquaman 2, were you? They released me from my contract, and I fought to stay in it, and they kept me in it. I just don't know how much I'm in, actually, of the final cut. And they kept me in. They kept me in. In other words, I haven't lost a fucking thing. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal actually extended your contract in April of 2020. Is that correct? See, listen to the tone. She's just matter of fact. She's cold. She's not taking a tone with her. It's, I, I really, and you're not hearing any objections from the other side, which is just amazing. In part, they extended and, it and helped me. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal extended your contract again in November of 2021, correct? Not exactly. They extended it because it couldn't use me or any of the materials uh, for me. And that extension was for 20 months, right? That's correct. This is from March 26, 2021, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And this is after he made the statement you claim, the statements you claim are defamatory, right, Ms. Heard? 21, yes. Ms. Heard, you tweeted at Adam Waldman, quote, yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion you will still be short. I See, you know, why that's important is because she's essentially republicizing and, and calling more uh, public attention to the statements that Mr. Waldman is making. I read that right? Yes. We can put this down. Thank you. Ms. Heard, since your relationship with Mr. Depp ended, you have completed your level three sommelier training, haven't you? I haven't completed it yet. You're I just on level two? No, I'm on level three. You also have had a baby, right? I have. And you enjoy being a mother? So this line of questioning goes to the other damages. You know, um, you know, I, I, she's continuing on and she's leading a normal life. In other words, you're, you're no worse off now than before you met Mr. Depp. In fact, you're $7 million richer. More than anything. You still love to cook? I do. And you love to hike? I've taken a break on hiking for a minute. You have friends, right? I do have friends. And you spend time with those friends? Occasionally, when I can. And you exercise regularly? Every day. You just filmed a movie in March of 2022, isn't that right? Yes, the one I just shot in Guatemala that I spoke of earlier. I mean, it, it seems sort of innocuous at first glance, like, but there's a specific reason that Camille is going down this road. And I, and I guarantee you that uh, Amber doesn't have any clue as to why she's asking these questions. And you have, um, you had a major role in a major film that's scheduled to be released soon. Is that correct? Aquaman 2? As I said, I don't know if I will even be in the final cut or how much I will be. It was difficult to stay in the movie. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 356? I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I sometimes get so mad and lose it. I can I can't promise you I won't get physical. I mean, 
I get so mad, I lose it. Honestly, I'm, you know, everything to change. Promise you, I'm not gonna go around the walls. I will not say the worst unless I leave you. Unless it's it. And then I hope you leave me. I'm not going to, me too. I will leave you. It's fair. I can't do it, you know? And I think, honestly, if we hold each other accountable to that, it's fair. Ms. Heard, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, correct? That's correct. And you told Mr. Depp, quote, I can't promise you that I won't get physical, end quote. Correct? That, that's correct. He was and accusing me of instigating something in a situation I explained yesterday. And you also told Mr. Depp that sometimes you get so mad you lose it, correct? That's correct. I also... Here's the thing. There's a disconnect between what her testimony is and what the evidence on the recording shows. And I think that Camille did a masterful job at bringing that contrast out. Explain the context of that fight yesterday. Isn't that exactly what you told Ben King on your way back from Australia? That you get so mad you lose it? Absolutely not. I know that that's what Ben King testified to, but I never had that conversation with Ben King. I remember hitting you as a response to the whole thing. She's rolling her eyes, and uh, Camille's going to bring this up. Smiling as that audio recording is being played in your deposition, aren't you, Mr. Not smiling because of the audio. I'm smiling because of what's happening around me. And see, that, that she's, li she's clearly lying there because you look at, at when she rolls her eyes. It's at a specific moment uh, when that audio is played, right? And... It just what she's saying doesn't sound truthful, and there's no need for her to lie about this. You even roll your eyes at one point, don't you? I was sitting opposite a whole table full of lawyers who were snickering, laughing, and rolling their eyes at me while I was talking. You can't hear them snickering and laughing on that audio. Is there something amusing about kicking a door into your husband's head? No, I was rolling my eyes and commenting on what I was experiencing at that time in yeah. recounting the story. Is there something amusing to you about punching your husband in the jaw? That is not what I was smiling about, and no, I do not think it's amusing. Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday that when you left the courthouse after obtaining the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, you walked out to, quote, a sea of uh, paparazzi and cameras, right? That's correct. You testified that you were surprised to see this sea of cameras. This is amazing. That's correct. I love this. Because it was quiet when you went into the courthouse that morning. And the divorce had remained under the radar up to that point. You testified that no one knew about your divorce, so you thought it was going to stay that way, right? So when, when, what I love about what Camille is doing is it's, it's a slow build. And, you know, and she's just walking her right into a, a brick wall, basically. No, I always figured it would come out. I just was trying to buy time. You knew the media had been alerted that you were filing for divorce, right, Ms. Heard? No, I just knew that it was impossible to do that private. You never ask a question you don't know the answer to. Do you think Camille knows the answer to this question? You're damn right she does. This is this is classic. So you could just hope it was a matter of time. When you, you knew filed. they were going to be there, didn't you? No, I did not. The I mean, I assume, I assume since it's a public building that there is that likelihood, or not likelihood, but possibility. Mm -hmm. But um, I was, you know, I was, I was shocked. If we could please play and display to the jury. So whenever you turn, uh, tw put a knife in and then twist, this is what it sounds like on cross-examination. Plaintiff's exhibit 1280. Now remember, she just said she didn't know the media was gonna be there or that they were alerted. Ms. Hurd, did you send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach 
Johnny, it's extremely important. Please tell him. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry. Uh, and I would like, I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him. Basically, I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry from me so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, fuck. I just, uh, I fucked up. I fucked up. You know, and, and she just said, she testified on cross-examination that she didn't know that they were alerted. But it, that's her deposition from earlier. And, and she said, and look, look at her fucking, she's holding her head. I love this. You slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? You let it slip out that TMZ had been alerted to your filing of the domestic violence restraining order, didn't you? I disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. TMZ is the same outlet that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before this deposition was taken, wasn't it? I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how owns to do that. the copyright to that video now, doesn't it? I have no idea what TMZ owns. Did they owns. pay you for that? I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So and what she's saying now just doesn't sound believable. And and there's a there's a doctrine, it's in Latin, it's called falso nuno, falso nomnibus. If you're lying about one thing, you're lying about everything. So if you can't believe believed on one thing, we, we can disregard your entire testimony. That can be an instruction that the judge gives the jury. Don't know that's gonna happen here, but it is something you can you can rely on. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? I have no idea. It is not that's not my area of ex expertise i wouldn't even know how to do that and also what does that get me if i wanted to leak things about johnny i could have done that in a much more successful way in a bigger way for years now when years. you were extorting him for seven million dollars i got a fraction of what i was entitled to in the state of california by the way right. what extortion well, and she also didn't have any of the debt. She, you know, they racked up thirteen million dollars in debt in about fifteen months, and she didn't have to pay a dollar of that. Tossa Van Reed is your ex-wife, right? That's right. She's my ex-partner. She's the one that told, that you told this jury Mr. Depp was jealous of, right? Yeah. Well, that was a 2013 fights around March. Yes. You testified that he tried to burn one of her paintings, right? That's correct. You testified he tried to burn. Um, one of your favorite paintings that she did, right? I don't know if it was one of my favorites. You committed domestic violence against Miss Van Reed during your relationship, didn't you? No, I did not. You assaulted her at a Seattle airport in 2009, didn't you? No, I did not. And people saw that? That's not true. And it was covered in the press. Isn't that true? It was, a, it was planted in the press by Johnny's team. It, two days after I got the TRO. Ms. Hurd, did Ms. Van Ray come out after that article came in to make a... So now, so the way this works is this. So you have a direct examination. That's the lawyers, you know, witnesses for that particular side. So in this case, the defense and counterclaim. They ask the direct. Okay, then you have the cross-examination, which... which uh, uh, Camille just did, and now you have redirect. So you can kind of come back and clean things up a little bit, but this does not go well for their side. And it's actually funny. A public statement, it was false. Of course. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. So uh, when you have these objections, you know, you, you first of all, you can't ask leading questions on, on direct or redirect. You can ask hearsay questions. That means call, and if you, her own statements are hearsay. You know, they're not a statement of a party opponent. It's, a, it's an out-of-court statement, so she can't say what she said on a prior occasion unless it's one of the other exceptions. Your Honor, I should be at least be <laughs> overruled. Thank you. Of course she did. Okay. Now, let's talk about the TMZ alerted. Explain to the jury what you meant by the TMZ was alerted. 
so when you make these kind of filings, meaning divorce, uh, marriage, things like that, they are public record. And so when we filed for divorce, when I filed for divorce, I asked my team to file in the most discreet way, literally to put it under a stack of papers and file it at the end of day. So kind of had more of a shot of being missed by the paparazzi and by TMZ and those sorts of publicity outlets. I believe that we had been. Here's the thing. If some nondescript paralegal goes down and makes a filing, divorce filing, she doesn't need to be there. She doesn't have to do anything. You know, it can be done by a law firm. If she goes down there with her publicist, she's going down there to publicize this. And then she just screwed up. And, and so she's I, I wouldn't even bring this up on redirect because who the fuck cares? Remarkably lucky following the divorce that it wasn't picked up and that it gave me a, a precious few days um, of, of, of peace at that really fragile time. When I found out that they were going to run the story or that they had the information, I was trying to get a hold of Johnny to clarify that I did not do this in a punitive way. I didn't want him to be mad at me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to find out in that sort of context online. Why did James Franco visit you on the evening of 5-22-2016? Mm. Objection calls for speculation. Do you know? Yes. Please tell us. Because he was my friend and he lived next door, quite literally next door. And I had frankly exhausted my support network with my usual friends and was happy to welcome as much friendship at that time as I could possibly get. Exhausted my support network. That's probably the truest statement she said. In other words, I've been a pain in the ass to all my friends. And nobody will fucking talk to me. Now, the video showed uh, him laying his head on your shoulder. Can you describe for the jury what the interaction was, without saying what was said, what the interaction was that led to that? He, uh, after seeing my face, put his Objection head honor, on my calls shoulder. calls for speculation. That doesn't call for speculation. If she sees that he, he sees her. He, he touched no. the side of my I'll face, too. The objection. And, and okay. Okay. Again, Your Honor, if we can instruct the witness. If to you could wait till after the objection, please. All right. Next what? question. So one of the other things you need to do is control the courtroom, control the, the situation. Camille does a masterful job at that. What did Mr. Franco do uh, on the elevator before laying his head on your shoulder? He you know, touched the side of my face and Which he doesn't responded do, by the to way. what he saw. When you have a good handle of the rules, you can use them as weapons, and that's what Camille does here. She objects, and they're all appropriate objections. Amber Heard's lawyer, on the other hand, I, well, let's just watch. Objection, Your Honor, leading. Objection, Your Honor, leading. It's not offered to, it's, and it's, hearsay. It, sustained. Your Honor, it's prior consistent statements. It's, it's leading. It's Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustain your objection. Honor, your Honor, may I approach That's him? fine. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Oh, Calls man. for hearsay. Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. They're suggesting Objection, Your Honor. Can we approach? Right. This is, again, an approach. Objection, Correct. leading. Objection, I did. leading. To this. Objection, I did. leading. Calls. Right. This is awesome. This is just classic. This is one lawyer pitted against another, and, she, and Camille's not letting her get away with the damn thing. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. Was objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. All right. I'll, when there's objection, please stop. Is that true? Or objection, false? Your Honor. Leading. Your Honor, she, and, she absolutely so did it's, that. It's leading. Maybe objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. Relating to your nose. Objection. Leading. Sustain. What, I foundation. Said, what anything, hearsay. What, what if anything? It's not the cure all. It's sustained. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. So there's rules of evidence. Okay. So let's talk about leading. Remember what I said? On, on direct or redirect, you cannot lead the witness. You can't say, the sky was blue on Friday, wasn't it? You can't do that. Number two, uh, foundation. You, ha you can't speculate as to what somebody else thought or you know what was in somebody else's mind. So what, why, why did James Franco do X? Objection. Uh, speculation. You don't know what was in his mind. Uh, and... Uh, Hearsay. Hearsay is a statement other than uh, the declarant offered for the truth of a matter asserted out, out of court statement. And, uh, and so Camille's got an excellent handle on this, and she's like a laser. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation calls for speculation. Do you recall 
I love this. I'm I trying. love this. I'm trying. I'm trying. Objection on her here, say. I'm trying. I'm. Oh God, I'm getting my ass kicked here. Oh, um, um, you know, and and the way Johnny Depp handled it was so much differently. He he, he would look over and and he, he it was more charming, you know, and uh, you could tell she is fucking rattled. I love it. I just love it. You know, and I've been there at times where you where you are kind of in a box. You quit. And here's the thing: when you're examining a witness, you have to know when to quit. You know, you you don't have to address every. You don't have to hit everything out of the park. Get make your points and get out. Well, she asked too many questions. I'm going to object to the. Tissue. I'm going to object to the extent it calls for hearsay and lack of foundation. Oh, She's overruled. An improper expert opinion. No. Objection, Your Honor. Objection, leading. What if anything, and that does cure on no, it. Doesn't, but oh, I'll, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. So she she gets frustrated, and uh, she's what if any? The way she starts the question out, what if any? And then she's going to you know assert something happened. So it's leading. You know when you start out, what if any? Uh, what if any? A decision did you make after uh, there was a fire in the building? Well, there was a fire in the building. That's leading. You're assuming some facts within the question. Then that's what the judge was kind of getting at here. And here's the other thing. Judges don't like speaking objections. You shouldn't be arguing shit in front of the jury. So it should just be, and if you listen to Camille, Camille's not arguing anything. She's just saying objection leading, objection hearsay, objection foundation. That's the way you object. And then, uh, and if you want to argue about it, then you approach. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. This is outside the scope of cross-examination. Prior. Okay, now outside the scope. So remember we say you have direct and then cross. Well, now redirect has to be confined to what was what occurred during the cross-examination. Anything outside of that is not fair game and and can't be asked. Or if it's already been asked, you can't go ask. It's called ask and answer. See, I mean. Once the judge says sustained, shut the fuck up and move on. Move on quick like a laser. And she doesn't do that. And she looks rattled. And she is rattled. Next question. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you can see that she's really not happy with her lawyer right there. I don't have any more questions. You're all right. Thank you. Right. Maybe you can have a seat next to your attorney. Okay. You can go ahead and seat next to her. That's fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess then for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? And you see she just bolts right out the door, which is totally disrespectful to the jury. That if I was the judge, I would probably admonish her for that because you don't just walk out the out the door. And she walked out the door, didn't look at her lawyers, didn't wait for the jury. You're supposed to stand for the jury, show them respect, and they file out. So this has been our reaction to a masterful cross examination of Amber Hurt. Now today and tomorrow, and you know later in the trial, they're bringing other evidence and other witnesses. You know her friends come in and some pictures come in. And they can be kind of compelling. So, and but they're on deposition, most of them. And her sister's testifying. So uh, we'll react to some more of this. Uh, let's. Uh, I want to hear what your comments are about my reaction, about what you thought was important, not important. Um, you know, and I'm not trying to pile on Amber Heard at all, but I, this was, you know, from a lawyer standpoint, I thought this was a masterful job, and uh, struck the exact right tone. Uh, strident advocacy without being unnecessarily cruel uh, to Miss Hurt. So, I'm Bruce Rivers. Uh, thank you for watching. Next time, uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the channel. Um, we are doing it. We have a Patreon account, and we use that money for to get indigent people out of jail, so sign up there. Spread the word, my brothers. Uh, we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts.